Today Sara and I are going to make a sformato di patate, finocchio e prosciutto. So we're going to make a type of gratin or casserole with potatoes, fennel and ham. Let's begin with the fennel and we're going to cut the end off and also these stems and fronses. Uh, one thing you can totally do is to boil, of course you would cut kind of the imperfections off, but you could boil, boil these and um, afterwards put them in a soup or even blend them up and add them to what you are doing. We're going to cut it in half and from the halves we're gonna cut wedges, just like so. Do you know that fennel is absolutely delicious raw? And that's how we usually eat it. But cooked as well, as we're going to prepare it today. It has a slight taste of um, licorice. So for people that don't like licorice, they might not like it. Sara just informed me that she doesn't like licorice, but she loves fennel. So here I just put some bicarbonate in there or baking soda, and we will soak the fennel right in here. It is said that the bi bicarbonate helps with eliminating pesticides and also other things that could be dangerous for human consumption. If you soak your vegetables into some bicarbonate, then it really eliminates a lot of things. That will do that for about five to 10 minutes until we finish with the potatoes. As for the potatoes, we will peel them. This is a great little potato peeler. And then we will use a mandolin to cut them nice and thin. What we will do both with uh, the fennel and the potatoes, we will place them into some boiling water, separately of course, for just a few minutes. We will put the potato peels in here as well. And always remember, all this is perfect for a compost pile and next year you will have some beautiful soil and you know exactly what's in it. I'm going to put the potato in and we're going to quickly cut them to about, let's see, about this thickness. This makes the job so, so much quicker and easier, but you can also do it with a sharp knife to boil them in some boiling water that has been salted for just a few minutes. The water is boiling and the potatoes go in. Time is up and our potatoes are ready to come out. Treat them with respect so it's, they won't break. And we are going to put them on a tea cloth until all the fennel is done as well. Now we'll rinse the fennel and do the same thing with the fennel. In the same water where the potatoes were boiled, we're going to put in the fennel. And it's almost a struggle for me putting the fennel in because we love it so much raw. I almost hate to put it in the water, but the final dish is going to be very delicious. As children, this is what we used to eat, almost like an apple during finocchio season. Time is up and even the fennel can come up and we'll set it right next to the potatoes. Now this water right here from the fennel and from the potatoes would be absolutely delicious to be used in a soup. The fennel goes right here next to the potatoes and now it is time for us to prepare the bechamel. The bechamel, first you make a roux out of butter and flour. This is all-purpose flour, to which later we're gonna add the milk. We're gonna season it with some salt. And this time, we're also gonna use a little bit of dry thyme and a bit of garlic, and of course, some nutmeg. First of all, we're going to put the butter into the pan. And we're gonna allow it to melt. And since there is water in the butter, we're gonna allow the water in the butter to cook out before we add the flour. Now that the water has cooked out, 
but we're gonna directly add the flour. And even this right now, will need to cook gently for about three minutes and it will begin to already start thickening up right in here. Now, whenever you make bechamel, you need to make sure that you stir because you do not want it to burn on the edges. Now it is time to add the milk. And we're gonna keep stirring again so it won't cause lumps. And right now it looks pretty lumpy, but as you stir, it will become this beautiful, creamy sauce. We're gonna add the rest of the milk and we will continue to whisk really well and it will just be this beautiful, smooth consistency. If ever you were to have trouble for some lumps to still be present, you can always use an immersion blender and that will take care of it. But already now, it's starting to become nice and smooth. We're starting to get a nice consistency. And to it, we're gonna add some salt, salt to taste. And normally you would not add thyme to a bechamel, but I just wanted to add an extra little flavor because it will go well with the potatoes and the fennel. But we'll also add the nutmeg, not too much and we're gonna grate some of this garlic into it as well. I would have much preferred using fresh thyme, but unfortunately my little plant died. So this is why we're using some dry thyme. This is just about ready. We're gonna bring it to a simmer and then we are ready for the assembly. And although time is usually not added, remember that cooking is an art, you can be creative. Baking is more of science. So first of all, I'm gonna put a little bit of olive oil in the bottom and then sprinkle it with some breadcrumbs that were made of leftover bread that we allowed to dry out in the oven and then just put it in the food processor so you have nice fresh breadcrumbs whenever you need them. Now in the very bottom of the pan, we're going to start layering some of the potatoes. Over the potatoes, we're gonna put some of the bichamel sauce. First, I'm gonna put some parmigiano down. This is parmigiano reggiano. And then we also have a little bit of fontina and we're also gonna put some slices of fontina on. We're just gonna put a few little pieces over the top and then we'll put the prosciutto there. And now some of these beautiful slices of prosciutto. This is gonna be so good. I can barely wait. slices of finocchio of fennel and you don't want to overlap those too much because you want to make sure that the bechamel will get right in between once again we're going to put the bechamel right over it and next will be the potatoes again Put the potatoes down and then on the potatoes we'll put some more cheese and bechamel once again the bechamel to it i actually added a ladle of that cooking water with the potatoes and the fennel because it was thickening up a bit too fast so you can totally do that some more cheese and now we're gonna finish it off with the rest of the fontina and you don't need to be super precise with it because it's gonna melt into this incredible sauce right in there. Mm. The prosciutto. Here, I think I'm gonna cut this one in half. First of all, to make sure I have enough and also because some of them are a bit too thick. And so we're gonna keep 
keep going until everything is nicely covered up. And we're going to put all this on the very top, over which at the end we will also add just a little bit more breadcrumbs. Turn this around, we're going to finish it off with little bits of fontina and the leftover parmigiano reggiano. Just to make sure, since olive oil always makes everything better, we're gonna top the breadcrumbs with some olive oil. And this is gonna give it a nice kind of crunchy texture, which will be a nice contrast to the creamy interior of this dish. All right, now a little bit of olio d'oliva, these golden drops. And this guy is ready to go into the oven and will allow the oven to do its magic. Our oven floor is at about 420 degrees, but since we have a small fire going, it's gonna be just right for baking this delicious dish. Before cooking anything in the oven, you always need to be mindful of the temperature of the oven, and that's why an infrared thermometer is absolutely necessary. Guys, if you could only smell the aroma coming out of this oven. Let's see. Oh wow, look at this. Look at it bubbling here. This nice texture on top with the crunchiness of the breadcrumbs is gonna be so delicious. Now I know we're totally tempted to get into it right now, but it's gonna be so much better if it sets for about 15 to 20 minutes. Time has finally come to serve our sformato di finocchio patate. We're gonna cut a portion out. Mmm, this is going to be so good. We're going to pull it out. And I'm gonna show you as to how delicious it looks. Creamy and all these layers of incredible goodness. We're gonna place it right in here. As usually, I'm gonna be the first one that gets to taste it. And so here we go. A little bit of this creamy bechamel, some of that potatoes, and the fennel, and I can barely wait to eat it. Mmm, buon appetito. Mm-hmm, so good.